So Muriel, could you introduce yourself and the center to us? So uh, my name is Muriel Estipero. I am from Makazana. Yeah. Um, I am the president of the center and also um, we take therapy sessions for children with autism, ADHD, learning disabilities. I have also completed my autism intervention course from uh, Umid, uh, which is a child development center in Mumbai. Uh, so at the center, we see a lot of um, uh, pediatric cases. Uh, children who have autism who are on the spectrum, autism spectrum. Uh, also we see uh, children with ADHD who are hyperactive, who are, uh, who are having attention deficit. Um, we also have a lot of cases uh, like learning, uh, children with learning disabilities, then global developmental delay and uh, other, uh, other uh, concerns. So I also um, take counseling sessions for children and for adults. Who, who, rec who recommends them to the center, the schools? So or? we have a lot of references coming from uh, different hospitals, uh, from different doctors, from different uh, schools. Uh, like right now we are getting a lot of references from classic hospital. Uh, yeah. I see. And uh, generally what are the signs to look out for in a child? Okay, so if suppose we see a child um, who, are on the, who is on the spectrum, autism spectrum, we see a child who has symptoms like uh, the child will not maintain eye contact. If suppose I call out the child's name, the child will not respond. Or the child might have attention deficit, uh, will have uh, low sitting tolerance and a lot of parents' um, uh, parents' concerns are like the child has speech delay. So the child uh, at the age of uh, 2 years or maybe uh, 3 years, the child is not able to speak words. So that's the main concern of the parents. And over time, is there is there chances that they would recover some of them, or how does it work? See, when we say autism, uh, we do not say that autism has a cure, but definitely, like there are there are a lot of parents who see uh, drastic improvements in the child. Um, also, um, uh, doctors who refer the kids here uh, to the center. Uh, parents go back to the hospital or back to the uh, doctors and they also report that a lot of changes has been seen in the child with respect to speech, with respect to the child's behavior, with respect to the child's attention, academics, etc. So once they come to the center, Muriel, uh, what is the course of action or treatment or...? So uh, once we get a lead from any school or any doctor, I take the first assessment. So I do a psychological assessment uh, keeping the child's uh, developmental milestones in mind, for example, the speech development, then uh, physical, then uh, social, emotional development. So we have checklist like for autism, we have checklist. Uh, then for ADHD also we have checklist. If suppose a child who has some behavioral concerns, then um, we uh, we do a behavior modification for the child. We also have a behavior chart wherein we uh, see uh, like what are the behavioral changes that the child goes through or what are the behavioral modifications modifications that are required for that particular child. At the moment, how well or how badly does Goa treat these kind of children? Do they have infrastructure? Do they have schools? Do they fit in? Or there are special schools? Or how far? How close by? So the thing is that, first of all, there is less awareness among people that there are children who are special needs children. So uh, uh, there are few schools in Goa wherein uh, like uh, there are like special schools in Goa like there is Sanjay school, there is uh, Jod school uh, and there are few private schools which has a uh, resource room. But the awareness among people that my child has any difficulty or has any concern, that awareness among people is very less. So people uh, like parents uh, especially like they do not accept that their child has a difficulty. Plus the schools are far away, it's not necessary that it will be close by. Yeah, even the attitude of teachers is uh, it's not very good when it comes to children with special needs. So you all started when and how many children coming here more or less? So we started um, on 30th of March. I see. Okay, uh, like this year. 23. Yeah, 23. And uh, so far we have around uh, 30 to 40 kids coming to the I center. So they have to attend uh, how often or what is it? So it depends on the on the level of the child. If suppose the child has speech delay, so we will see like the current level of the child and we will tell them like they have to come twice a week or thrice a week. I see. Yes. Some parents they also request us like uh, they want to come every day for sessions. 
I see. Yeah, but uh, what we recommend to them is that like even they need to work at home because only if suppose parents involve themselves in the child's progress, it will help the child. Faster. Yes, faster, faster development. So you all face any issue of crowding or something of that sort? No, it's managed. Yes. Uh, what happens is that like nowadays there are a lot of cases of a uh, lot of children with uh, symptoms of autism and uh, they need to book the uh, appointment in advance. Okay. Uh, like uh, we, we really have like a lot of kids and most of the kids like go to school so they can come only like after okay. like in the afternoon time. So there are a lot of kids and uh, we... Uh, at present, we have like a workload of so many kids, like so many parents wants to come for BAV therapy or occupational therapy. So giving them slots becomes a little difficult as of now. How do people contact you? Phone number or Phone WhatsApp? Phone number, WhatsApp, uh, even through Facebook. Facebook is what? With the name of your page uh, or group? The Healing Center 2023. The Healing Center 2023. Yes. And uh, WhatsApp number? Uh, 9309. 3131 double. 3 also we have another number uh, 7558 2131 double. Double 4. Double 4, yes. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks. So, Utkarsha, tell us about yourself, your background, and the work. So, my name is Utkarsha Gaukar, and I, I'm from Sawadem. Yeah. So, I've completed my bachelor's in occupational therapy from Goa Medical College, followed by internship, born, and now I'm working here. Okay, so so in occupational therapy is uh, is a is a degree in occupational yes, therapy. Yes, it's a four year plus uh, six months internship. I see. So wow. complete four and a half years. So so what exactly for us people who don't understand what does occupational therapy mean? Yeah. So in with respect to childrens, like increasing their independence in like their basic activities of daily living, like eating, dressing, then going to toilet bathing so making the child independent in all these things also working on the uh, skills such as some gross motor skills some fine motor skills such as jumping catching and throwing ball then some uh, some hand manipulations teaching the child some uh, strategies to increase the grip of the hand like uh, some helping the child in writing so all these things to me yes, yes, yes. like stimulating that environment here so that the child learns and then the parent has to follow that at home also. How long they have to spend here? Like one hour session it is. One hour yeah. session. How many times a week? So it depends on the case, like how severe it is. So like mostly it is twice or thrice a week. I see. And also we like majorly work on sensory issues. Like these children have difficulty in processing the sensory information. Like processing the light, sound, taste, I smell, I see. some different texture, some touch. So we train the child so that the processing of all these senses become easier. Very interesting. And uh, do children show positive results after yes. going through this? They show like mostly like first two three sessions like we we do like more of a repo building. More of a repo building. building. So that the child becomes comfortable in the environment. And then slowly slowly working on each each problems like how the child depends on like level of the child. Amazing. Yeah. Very. What is the biggest challenge you face? Biggest difficulty or what? Yeah. There is no like biggest challenge as such. But okay. Every child is different. Okay. So ways of handling every child is different. So we have to just look up, look after that. Like how I'm going to approach to this child. I'm going to treat, treat this child. So that's the challenge. So there is no big big challenge as such. Interesting. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You enjoy your work? Yes. <laughs> All the best. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Amna, could you just introduce yourself and tell us? Uh, my name is Amna Parveen and I'm here from Margaon. Uh, I've completed my bachelor's in Manipal University uh, in the course speech, uh, bachelor's in speech language pathology and audiology. And right now I'm practicing currently at the healing center as a speech therapist. What made you go for such a unusual and, and you know not very common course? Yes, uh, that's the main question I've been asked. Uh, one of the reasons is, as you said, it's very different and uh, it uh, falls in the medical field. So, and uh, it is something what people aren't aware of and uh, helping someone, you know, giving them the basic ability to, you know, function as basic human function to help them do that. I think, I think that's the greatest gift one can offer. True. But, uh who needs your help and how would you identify? Okay, so uh, let me tell you about my uh, job role. 
So I have done uh, speech language pathology and audiology. So I'll tell you in uh, terms of speech. Yeah. So basically, if your child uh, is uh, having a delay in speech or is not talking, suppose you have a three-year-old child who just says uh, one-word sentences. So that is when you have to be uh, aware or concerned that your child has a speech delay because by three years of age, your child should at least talk in uh, three to five-word sentences. And if your child is just speaking one-word sentences, that is when you know you have to come to a speech therapist. But the awareness among parents is not there. They would first go to a pediatrician. And then the pediatrician would recommend you to a speech therapist. So that is where we have to create the awareness that you need to be aware that your child is having certain difficulties and who do you need to approach. How does it work? Everyone with autism would necessarily have a speech impediment or no. vice versa? No. Most of them around uh, 40 to 60 children would have uh, communication difficulties. Out of 100. Yeah, so sometimes there are kids who would communicate at home, but they won't communicate around social settings. That is, they would communicate with their parents, but not with strangers. So that means we work on that aspect as well. That would be a social communication. So we'll uh, teach them how to speak around with different people, not just the people at home. And also how to refine their speech. And uh, when you talk about speech, uh, we talk about language as well. Speech is the way you speak. Language would be understanding what you're speaking. That is your receptive language. That is how you understand uh, the language. And expression is how you are able to express it. Yeah. So, uh, like ideally, how, how many sessions you have and uh, how long does it take to show results? So, uh, that's another thing, another challenge I would face. So basically, first I would assess the child and accordingly, uh, as a speech uh, therapist, I have, uh, I have the right to give the diagnosis of the child. So I would diagnose the child with so-and-so disorder. And of like course, what, what are the disorders? So, receptive and expressive language delay with autism or... Um, say social communicative uh, deficit or social communication uh, problem or speech sound disorders that is certain kids produce certain sounds differently like for example for lorry they'll say rawly that is the low sound gets substituted with the raw sound so we help in terms of that even stuttering as well we help with that as well so according to the assessment then we will uh, assess the child the severity and suppose uh, how how many days in a week does he does he need like four times or three times or two, or two times and accordingly you have to first counsel the parent very well how to go about with the things and then they have to you have to train them to do these things at home and uh, accordingly you will see the results but thing with speech therapy is it depends on different child each child is different so improvement of each child depends and it takes a few months to even a few years but the parents nowadays, the attitude they hold is that they want, you know, drastic improvement. But that is not how therapy works. And you can't pressurize your child. Each child is different. So you have to give the child the time to improve. So that is one challenge which each therapist faces. here. They would come for a month or two and they would not see, uh, you know, the changes. And they were like, my child is not changing. But you are not giving your child the time. And you are not doing the things what we teach you here at home. So you can't expect you know changes so it will take a time you have to be very patient with your child that's another important thing your profession gives you satisfaction yes yes uh, i believe you should do something what you love doing or you know there's no point in doing that all the best thank you thank you so much i think it's an important job i learned so much about it